Yes, sorry for the, um, the technical uh, challenges at the start there. My name is Matt Salih. I'm the director of NBI. We've got Julie uh, online and a bunch of other people. So thank you for joining us uh, on Monday morning. You're going to hear very briefly from me uh, before I, um, I throw to, uh, uh, to Julie and Larky to take us through. Now I'm just going to uh, share my screen here. All right, so uh, this is uh, the seventh tour we've done over to the US. Uh, we've taken over uh, 55 founders uh, to a range of sites of the US to really help um, build aspiration and thinking about what's possible uh, from Australian markets into, uh, into a market like the US. We've taken one trip to Southeast Asia, which I remembered on the weekend after last prompted me, uh, and to Singapore. We only took four founders there, but it was a good start. Uh, linked to uh, Konica and Ulta. The main trips we've done, uh, six of them to uh, Silicon Valley, Austin and New York, have been really picking up that opportunity to uh, see how you can expand your uh, product services, your businesses into uh, to new export markets. So we put together this uh, female focus tour. There's a little overview today. You're going to hear from me very quickly. Julie's going to come in to talk about the objectives and themes. And we've got one of our testimonials from one of our founders, Melissa Little. Um, who has a wonderful startup called Venue. Mel's in the crowd today. Thank you, Mel. Um, uh, before pro uh, for Larky talks a little about program logistics. So these trips, as I said, have um, built up a huge network of uh, companies, of individuals uh, that we work with over there to really bring uh, that concept to life of being able to scale your business into a new market, understanding the different dynamics, particularly in a US business setting, but also getting that inspiration and aspiration when you come back here to really uh, to drive forward. So I'm going to throw to Julie now. Uh, Julie, if you you can uh, share, I don't know if you can share your screen. I'll leave this one up. You maybe can tell us when you need to flick through slides, and uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, unmute it. I'm just going to unmute you. He says. There you go. I'm unmuted now. Are we good? Okay. I actually don't have slides here on this end. I was just going to chat with everyone today. Um, I think Lockie has the slides. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. So first of all, welcome to everybody who's um, joining us on this talk today. And uh, really excited to be working with Flinders to bring this program for female founders to the U.S. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to ask everybody to raise their hands since we have a lot of people online and I'm not able to see the audience. Um, but I would have asked everybody who's been to a conference before where they get really inspired and excited by what's going on and they think I'm going to really bring this into my business and use it and incorporate it and then you get back into your business and the next thing you know you're so busy that every, all these great ideas and everything that you, you learned along the way kind of gets thrown by the wayside. And I think the, the way this program is going to be really different is that we really want to work with each of you who are going to participate to make sure that all of the great information and connections and learnings that you get along the way are really put to use in your business so that you can take this to, to go forward and really thrive, um, both personally and professionally. And it's really important that as a, a founder of a business or any type of entrepreneur, somebody working with entrepreneurs, that you have um, the tools that you need, the right mindset, the right network, and the right support, um, and the right insights. And that's what this mission is all about, is working to um, put all of these tools into your hands and working with you before, during, and after to make sure that it has a really strong impact on your business. So um, getting into the details of that, what we've done is we've put together some different themes for each day so, so that we can make sure that we're covering off on all topics um, that will really help you thrive in your business um, and specifically as female entrepreneurs. Um, while this is the outline that we have to date, as we have all of you signing up to participate, we're going to e refine that even more 
so that we make sure that this program is tailored to you and to your needs because that's what's the most important part about this is that you're getting out of this program everything that you need to be able to really to back yourself to feel confident um, to have the knowledge the expertise and the contacts that you need to drive your business forward and a good understanding of what another market looks like um, so that you can determine how you want to grow your business if it makes sense for you to expand internationally and when so the we'll start out in Austin and then move into San Francisco um, as you can see on screen uh, we'll start out on on the first day helping you to understand what resources are available in Austin um, and understanding that market will also work on making sure that you feel comfortable and confident and strong and you're ready to be bold in your business and talk about the importance of your pitch. Um, not everybody is ready for pitching for capital and I think we have a misnomer in the industry in general that that's all that pitching is about. You need to have strong pitching skills in your business because any type of partner, any um, if you don't have a co-founder and you're looking for co-founders, if you're looking to bring in new employees, you're looking to bring on customers, anybody that you're doing business with, you want to make sure that you've got a strong, solid pitch that's coming in across that's really clear so that they can easily understand your business so that in any aspect of your business you're able to bring forward um, and bring along for the ride all of the people that you need to so that's uh, the day day one and then um, on Tuesday the theme will be looking at should you expand internationally when is the right time and you know how can we make sure that this visit um, to this market as well as to um, as, as well as to San Francisco really pays off. Um, we'll have folks from the um, Austin community that you'll be interacting with, that you can ask questions from, that you can learn from. But it's really important, again, I think <clears throat> another misnomer that we, we have in the industry is you have, to, um, you have to be global from day one. And I would say you have to think global from day one. So it's thinking about do I need to be expanding to other markets and when and we'll help you to get really clear on what that looks like so that you can expand and get, grow your business in a way that makes sense for you and your lifestyle and that's uh, sustainable and that you're ready when the time comes and if it comes um, and then the third day is um, the 31st which is Halloween in the United States um, well actually I think it might be in Australia as well but I don't think it's uh, celebrated as much so we'll, we'll spend the day um, working and moving from um, from uh, Austin to the Silicon Valley and do an overview of the Silicon Valley and then we'll make sure that we actually have a really fun evening planned um, that night as well to take advantage of being in the States in, in, in Halloween. And uh, having been in San Francisco in the Silicon Valley for 20 uh, plus years, I can tell you there's, there's a lot of interesting things going on and uh, all of the companies that I worked at there um, always had big, uh, interesting uh, Halloween extravaganzas. So it'll be just interesting in general to be in town that day. Um, and then whoever's got the slides, if we can move to the next slide, um, please. Um, so then it's back to business the next day. And that's getting strong into your business, um, making sure that you've got the right um, market fit, um, and that you're thinking about your, your customers the right way and your business model. So we'll be having uh, panels as well as individual mentoring sessions on that day so we can make sure that you're really strong. Um, you can see a list on, on the slide of some of the um, types of companies that we'll be looking at visiting and interacting with. Again, we want to make sure that these visits are not just for the sake of going and, and, and uh, exploring a different uh, venue uh, or than where um, you're based locally, 
Um, but also, these companies are further ahead than a lot in the in the Australian market, and give you some great insights into um, uh, where we're going. Um, also, I'm just getting in, seeing the note to make sure that you guys all see that we'll make these slides available to you um, and the draft agenda after after this presentation too, in case you're not able to. Um, see these clearly or want to be able to look back on them. Um, and again, at the beginning of each day and the end of each day, we'll get together and we'll be chatting about what, what's, um, what we've been going through, what we've been learning, how we're feeling about everything that's going on, um, and making sure we're able to put this into um, practice in our businesses when we get back. So um, the next day in San Francisco, we are going to um, have themes of thinking on your feet and the lessons we've learned so far. We're going to help make those sink in in a different uh, way than, we norm than you might normally, and that's why we're going to have a group improv session. I've ha had sessions like this with many of the companies and teams that I've worked at before. And as you know, as a business leader, you're always thrown curveballs and things that you need to be able to handle quickly. And improv sessions are a really good opportunity to um, help you with that and to get you to feel really confident in how you can handle things like that. Um, we'll also talk about other things in your company um, how you build your, your company culture and make sure you're developing the culture that you're looking for, how you hire and how that's impacted by what's going on in, with the future of work. Um, over the weekend, um, we will put together an optional um, tour of the Napa Valley, a beautiful place to be with beautiful wines, a great opportunity for us all to unwind a little bit as well as continue to bond. Um, and on that Sunday, we'll hit, have a free day. We want to make sure that we're giving everybody the time necessary to have a little bit time if you need to, to recharge, <laughs> as well as if there's some things you need to continue to do in your business. Um, we we want to be mindful of that as well. And then coming into the, the next week, we'll start um, talking about things like capital. Um, making sure that everybody understands what are the different ways to bring money into your business if you're looking to raise money um, and what that means for you and your business so that if you're looking at going in that direction you really have a strong understanding of what that means before you get into it um, any kind of capital arrangement that you make is one of the most important that you'll be doing for your business and it's important to understand that before you enter into it and then we'll talk about um, legal considerations, and then we'll be doing a, a dinner that evening with some local founders, because, which will be a great opportunity to hear from others who've been there and done that as well. And that's part of the, the, the whole program throughout, is meeting people who've had the opportunities and experiences um, that you're, you're on your journey with, and learning from those who've been there before you. And then um, the following day, we'll set up, we've got some time allowed so that we can, uh, you can set up meetings of your own if there are people you want to meet with, if there's people we can help you get meetings with. And then um, Lockie and I and some others will be available for one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions um, that day as well. And then the, the wrap-up um, day will be um, networking and mentoring and how to make the most out of all of the connections that you've made, um, and how, uh, as well as developing partnerships that are going to support your business and going forward. Um, we'll do some final work on your pitch, and we'll have a wrap-up session so that we've, again, as I've said throughout this, really making sure that everything that you're learning and doing throughout this period of time um, is able to be taken back and put to use in the business that you're in now and any that you might be in the future. It's really all about your personal and your professional growth, um, not just today, but going forward. So I, th I, I think that's what I've, I've got lucky if you're up next. Yeah, th thanks, Julie. Um... Julie, just before you do go, it could be probably worthwhile for people, um, you probably don't need too much introduction, but maybe just give a little bit of overview of yourself and, and your career journey, just so people sure. have a bit of a clue. 
Sure. Sorry, I, I didn't do that because I, I was trying to be mindful of time and uh, figure that's on the website. So just to give you a little bit of a background of who I am and, and what I've been doing, I was in the Silicon Valley for 20 years. I've um, started my own startups. I've started two different companies myself. I've worked at some small startups, anywhere from four people, um, joined another company at 25 that went up to about 500 people. Um, I've got background in consumer packaged goods and health tech in um, media. I worked at Yahoo uh, back in the day when it was the homepage was still the number one page in the world. I ran that. So I've got experience with small companies, large companies, the politics, the networking that's necessary, um, understanding how to start and grow a business. And then since I've moved to Australia two years ago, I came here with the idea of really hoping to have an impact on the ecosystem here and help drive that forward in a really strong way. And I've been working with female founders um, for the past two years to do that and have been mentoring throughout my career, especially uh, females along the way, because I think it's really important to make sure that we've got the diversity and that we've got the strength um, to start companies and grow them to be really um, have great impact. And Lucky, I'll, I'll uh, when you say um, go, I'm actually, I'll stay on for the rest of the call. I'll just put myself on mute and I'm available for any other questions. No, no worries. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, we might hold questions to the end. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we're now just going to call on Melissa if we, we can. He's just going to, she's going to talk a little bit about her experience on one of MBI's missions and uh, yeah, just a couple of minutes. And, right? Yeah, you'll have to tell me when to stop because I'm on the yeah. mouth. That's no, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels weird standing up for a minute anyway. Yeah, the there. there, okay. And here. Um, uh, well, first of all, my name is Melissa Little. I'm a founder of Venue. So I've got a digital platform that's really focused on the weddings industry and uh, unique spaces. Kind of primarily, um, we're going into private properties and offering those back out to market that would never have previously been accessible. Um, so I was lucky enough in 2006, uh, I won one of the prizes with the Venture Dawn program. Um, so I got a chance to actually head across um, with the trip across to Austin, San Francisco, um, obviously doing South by South, uh, Southwest um, and New York as well too. So it was a phenomenal trip. Um, and I guess it was one of those things that you look back on now and I think I'm a little bit clearer about how great that trip was now as opposed to when I got back a week later. Um, and I think the big hurdles for me were like two major things and it was kind of like tackling that imposter sy syndrome. Um, I don't know, it's maybe a female thing, maybe it's not, but I certainly had it, um, particularly as a new startup and new founder. Um, it was kind of that mentality of, I've got this idea, can I do it? Um, and you go out there and you meet founders that have done exactly what we've done, but because they come from Silicon Valley, they're this big, amazing person that we can never be. But the reality is once you get over there and you do this trip and you sit opposite them and they tell you these stories that are exactly the same, they just grew up in a different neighborhood, you kind of come back and you're like, well, actually, no, we can do this. And just because we're from little old Adelaide doesn't mean that we can't actually get to the scale and the global currency that they've got. Um, so that was a really big hurdle for me, but it was also to getting past those things that we as South Australians and Australians typically suffer with. And this was not just female, like the whole group had this. Um, we talked about it several times and that just kept holding coaches through it, but it was that mentality of not wanting to talk yourself up and not wanting to really talk about where your business could go to. Um, we kind of, I think we get stuck in, you know, the mindset of talking to typical small business owners and not scalable business owners. And the reality is, you know, we, we're all kind of working on businesses that are scalable. So we need to get from that, into that mindset from day dot about talking about that global network. And for me, when you're sitting across the table, uh, like with someone like Jim Grubb, who is the chief evangelist officer for Cisco, which is, you know, a ridiculously large company. You, like even just walking into their offices, you don't walk into their offices, you walk into their block and there's like five different multi-level buildings and you're like, oh, which one are we going to today? And, you know, it, it's just a phenomenal experience and it's very much broadening. And for me, that broadening was something I needed right at the get-go. And I think it would be really valuable if you're just starting your business or whether you're really into it and looking to kind of take it to that next level. So 
yeah, I'd love to go back myself. And I think, yeah, I'd still absolutely get an awful lot more out of it. So, yeah. I didn't even talk for two. <laughs> I just, um, I guess I just wanted to quickly touch on some of the logistics. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Larky Thondola, so I joined NBI about five months ago. Um, prior to that, I've actually got 12 years um, as a trade investment person into the US. So eight, eight of that in the US, in Arizona, Washington DC and San Francisco most recently, um, where I headed up the New South Wales Trade Investment Office. So um, for those of you that, that are looking to expand into the US, then that's probably where yeah, my sweet spot is. Julie will bring you know, the startup component. Um, but yeah, if any of you actually, sit, you know, when you sign up, we'll, Julie and I will sit down together and work out, you know, what you need, how do we help you achieve that. Um, so a little bit about, I've, I think, I've probably up to about 30 to 40 trade missions of some description that I've run over my, the course of my career. Um, so I just thought we'd just quickly touch base a little bit about the logistics. So you'll note in the price we haven't included travel and accommodation. Um, that's deliberate because people come, you know, with different budgets, different... Um, expectations and we don't want to um, I guess preclude anyone by you know, picking out an expensive piece of accommodation or you know going somewhere that's not up to someone's standard and build those costs in so really um, you know and we also don't want to prescribe what airline etc so that's really just to, to allow the maximum participation of people um, we, we'll start Sunday evening in Austin with a, with a dinner. Um, if you've you know, never done the trip before, it's, you know, Austin's a bit out of the way, so I'd probably consider getting across on the Saturday, having a bit of a day to, to uh, catch up on some rest and, and to, you know, familiarise yourself with the sites. Some of you might want to even go the week earlier and do, do some you know, meetings on your own and um, sort of you know, fulfil some other business objectives outside of this. And I encourage you, it's a long way to go. It's an expensive place to get to, so once you're there, make the most of it. Um, as as um, Julie highlighted, we'll spend the first two days in Austin. Uh, we have a fantastic relationship with uh, Tech Ranch in Austin and their signs on the wall over there, um, their Tech Ranch Adelaide components. So uh, I'm actually there this time next week, uh, meeting with them and, and going through what the program might look like. Um, the Wednesday, we'll probably recommend trying to get an early morning flight into San Francisco. The good thing is the time difference if you leave um, San, uh, Austin at seven, you'll be in San Francisco by nine o'clock. Um, but again, flight options are fairly limited, so we probably won't kick off our schedule until about two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, Julie, who I was fortunate enough to meet before we both left San Francisco, we left San Francisco about the same time and, and both relocated to Australia. Um, both probably landed on the same place for where we would go for, for Halloween, um, which happened to be um, Fillmore Street. Um, which, yeah, as a fact, I've got a little six-year-old and I remember taking him as a three-year-old walking up and down Fillmore Street and the shops to a great Halloween party. And there also happens to be, you know, Julie and I both landed on the same bar that we suggested. So that was great. Um, San, Fran you know, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, we we'll mix that up again as we get more of an understanding of, you know, um, what people are trying to get and we'll try and balance it so we're not spending too much time on the uh, 101 driving back and forth. Um, Depending on timing, it can be anything from an hour to three hours. Depending on the traffic, it's horrendous. Um, but again, we'll, we'll we'll build that out on uh, depending on what people need to do, what the what availability of at the meetings are. We've got you know hundreds of people we can choose from. It's just a question of you know what, what's going to get the best bang for your buck for, for the people participating. Um, and um, I think that's probably it logistic wise. We'll wrap it up on the Wednesday. Um, and again, you know, I would recommend you know, you're going to meet a lot of people and um, take that Thursday and Friday to maybe make those one-on-one -on -one appointments. We, we have allocated Monday to do that, but we'll try and set those before we go. So there's going to be a stack of people you're going to want to follow up with and um, would recommend sort of doing that on that Thursday and Friday if you, if you can afford the time. Um, I think that's probably about it just around logistics. Happy to answer questions or you know, have, have, you know, any fears. I don't know if people have been to the US before, but it's sort of my second home and, and certainly Julie's first. So, well, now she's, she's telling me she's staying in Australia, so that's great. Um, and just one of the, we've got, we're fortunate enough to have Ariane Taus from the South Australian Government Trade Side Office to talk a little bit about the South Australian Export um, Acceleration Program. 
Um, and apologise to those online who uh, might be from elsewhere. This is, you know, is a South Australian centric grant. There is always the export market development grant. We haven't been um, at this point in time able to secure funding out of New South Wales and Victoria, which we're hoping to do, but we're still pursuing that. But um, please don't let you know dollars be the reason you don't participate. Stay in touch with us and and, and talk to us. We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, you know, I've get your presentation up, area. Lockie, would it be okay for those who aren't? Here we go. All right. Can you hear now, Julie? <laughs> Where are <you> with? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's new about that grant? So, that grant is replacing the export partnership program. And um, the good thing about it is that there is three different components as part of that grant. So the first one has been added especially for startups uh, to support startups um, expand overseas because we understand that the Australian market is sometimes too small and a bit uh, too complicated to start or too, yeah, just, uh, just a bit different to start with and companies need to um, expand overseas first and then come back. Um, so, so, yeah, so the first part is the emerging exporter. So for that grant, you can get up to 5K. Um, and uh, it's a one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, dollar matching. Uh, then you have the export accelerator, which is like the second component of the grant. And you can claim 30K out of that grant. Um, you can apply as many times as you want, but once you reach the 30K, um, you can't apply anymore. Um, and then the new market entry. So once you reach, um, once you use the 5K and then the 30K, uh, any new market you enter, you can get 15K. Um, I'm gonna go into a bit more details on the um, eligible criteria for each grant. Um, so for the emerging exporter, uh, it's basically for companies that have never done any sales um, overseas and are looking to expand. Um, any uh, part of that grant is on a competitive basis. So um, um, the first round of the grant uh, of the grant closed on the 21st of September. Um, so I strongly um, Strongly advise to actually apply for that round if you are interested in applying for your US trip, just because there will probably be less um, companies applying because of the short time frame of the grant. The next round will be uh, end of February. So for that one, there will probably be a bit more um, applications. Um, so um, to apply for that grant, you need to have eligible activities under that grant. I'm going to come back to this a bit uh, further. Um, it's 5K, uh, $1 for $1. And basically, um, this grant you can claim six months back. And once you receive that grant, you can use the fund for a year. So if you apply for the 21st of September, you can go back until the 21st of March. And, and the grant will actually apply until the 21st of September 2019. 
Um, so the SA Export Accelerator, I touched on that before, um, 30K um, that you can use um, under uh, eligible activities and the duration is the same. And then the new market entry, um, as mentioned before, 15K per new market. A new market is a market where you haven't had sales um, in the past, over the past five years. And same uh, eligible activities and amount and duration. So the eligibility criteria to enter these programs for an emerging exporter, you need to be new to international export. Uh, you need to be trading for at least a year and your turnover should be between 50K and 1 million. Um, this is the, the criteria are against your ABN, sorry, the grant program administrator will uh, keep your ABN record um, and um, yeah, one, one to $1 matching. Uh, for the export accelerator, you need to be act, act, in actively trading for 24 months, two years, and a turnover between 100K and 50 million. And for the new market, um, it's um, two years activities and turnover between 250K and 20 million. So basically this is a pipeline. So um, you start with, um, so the emerging exporter has been uh, set up for um, startups and then the export accelerator is for um, uh, companies that are um, exporting or new to export and then the new market um, it's when companies that are already exporting and their turnover is higher and so we've created that pipeline to support companies uh, long term over the years and support as many companies as we can. So the eligible activity, so under those, uh, this grant you can claim marketing materials so anything um, communication, website design, um, anything like that to support your um, export of a service or product, uh, any market research that you undertake uh, via Austrade or a third party, uh, any e-commerce development. Uh, if you're looking at uh, setting up your website for e-commerce, um, then um, this also uh, enter under the eligible criteria, um, export training and uh, consulting, uh, participation to trade shows and business missions, um, overseas travel and accommodation costs. So if you go on the US mission, you can claim travel and accommodation and support for inbound buyers. So if you, um, um, if you meet someone in the US during the mission and you want to invite them in uh, Adelaide uh, to see what you're doing, um, then uh, you can use that. And the good thing about that new grant is that before it was only for domestic travel. So if you knew that a potential partner was traveling to Sydney, you could um, just buy a ticket for Sydney to Adelaide. But now uh, it also covers international flights and, um, and travel. Sorry. There will be like a bit more detailed on all the activities in the booklets uh, that I leave here. Otherwise, everything is on our website and you apply for the grant on the website as well. Um, so what do you need uh, for the applications? Um, it's um, fairly easy. I think the, the bigger uh, part is the export plan. You will need to have an export plan in place. This grant is forward looking. It's an activity based grant. So um, basically, once you're uh, if you apply for that grant and then you receive um, the green light, um, you receive the funding up front. Um, so we need to know that you're going to use them to what you actually need to use them. Um, so hence the export plan. It's not an export strategy. It's literally a plan for the, uh, for the application. Um, you also need to provide, so I'll go back on the export plan a bit later, but you'll need to provide a full set of financial statements. Might be a bit difficult this time of the year, but the closest you can get the, be the better it will be for your application um, and then um, yeah projection budget or cash flow forecast for the next 12 months for the export plan basically um, so on the presentation it's written up to 15 pages but literally I wouldn't say that I would say between five and seven uh, pages um, the 15s are um, a maximum if you need to attach anything any annex to support your application but literally what we need to see is a page about your company a page about your product and service a page about your market um, a page about the activities you want to undertake so for instance you go to the us and then you list um, i'm gonna need that flight i'm gonna need that accommodation um i'm gonna need that to review my website as part of this. Um, and then um, the last page is about the return for the South Australian government to provide you with that grant. Um, so how is that gonna support your business? 
I've got all those questions for the application. So if you're looking at putting up an application, my job is to support you with this. So I won't draft the export plan for you, um, but I can send you the, um, you know, the question and a bit more uh, details on how to put up an application. And then you can send me your draft export plan. I can review it to see if it, uh, if it fits what the requirements um, of, the, uh, of the panel and the auditors. Um, and yes, again, the most recent set of full financials and projection budget, etc. As mentioned, the first round of the grant closes on the 21st of September, um, and uh, it's very short uh, timing. Um, but if you can get this one through, that would be good. Um, if you can also apply for the uh, round of the 16th February because it goes back six months, but the competition for that round will probably be a bit uh, stronger. And then the uh, last round of the financial year, um, it's subject to funding just because we, we're still paying the previous grant that we had. Um, but there is a commitment of the government until 2023 for that grant. Sorry, there's no, um, um, there's no reason why it won't continue after May and, and why May won't have any round. So this is it. So uh, my contact, uh, my colleague Karl Schnutgen, that's his contact detail. So he's the uh, person managing the grant program. So if you have any question, uh, you can either come to me or I come to Carl. Uh, usually, like if there's any gray area or financial question, he will be the person. I'm more into the business and then the export plan and how to support your exports. So uh, yeah, any question, let me know. I'd be happy to support you and get some money. Um, to go on that mission. We've got a few minutes. So, is there any questions around? Um, the grant was released on the 16th of August. Okay. Yeah, so our new Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment, David Ridgway, launched it at one of my clients' facility. Yeah, so it's a very, very new one. And uh, yeah, it's been launched, and then literally I organized a roadshow. <laughs> So I've been presenting with my colleagues since last week. That's probably my uh, ninth presentation on the ground now. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, the $5,000 one was specifically created in the of our startups. Yes, so, yeah. yes. So basically we had that problem uh, in South Australia that, or especially in, the, in, in my region, um, we did have a lot of uh, tech companies and startups that couldn't apply for any funding to go export. And that was a big problem. Um, for me, because what you know, how can I really support companies and also for Austrade because I'm I'm part of Austrade as well, and so uh, promoting Austrade landing pad without having any companies that could actually join the landing pad because of no money that they could receive. Um, that means that in South Australia at the moment we don't have any South Australian companies on the Austrade landing pad, and it's a big problem for uh, for us. Um, so as part of these activities, um, the landing pad is, um, is part of that. So if you go on the landing pad, you have your travel, you have your accommodation, and the costing of um, the admin for the landing pad is considered as um, uh, consulting or under that section. So, um, so that's basically this part has been designed for startups to support, um, support you for um, overseas. Yes. Business activity. You've been the second because if you already have a partner in the US, are you already doing sales with that partner? We have one partner. Yeah. So, oh, a client. Yes. Yeah. So you do sales. Yeah. So that would be the second part of it. Yeah. So the first one is if you haven't done any sales in that country. But it hasn't been 24 months of activity where we have the business. Yeah. So the activity is based on your ADN. So, right. yeah. So literally, oh. Carl will. Um, Look at into your business on the ABN. Uh, look at websites and then check. You know when you register your company and register. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that would be a grey area. Like usually, if you can prove that um, you do the exact same type of business and that it's just the continuity of your business, uh, you might be able to then, you know, 
continue um, um, as if you know your ABM is registered for a longer period, but that will be something that Carl um, we need to answer. So, yeah. But we had a similar question last week, and he said that. So I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank, thank you. you. So I've got business cards if you're interested in discussing further. Just check, is there any questions of, um, I guess, any of the panels, um, whether it's Julie or Ariane or Melissa or myself? Oh, just get the zoom back. Julie, is there any questions at that, like online, that you've seen at all? Or? No? I'm here. Um, I, have, I haven't seen any questions come through. Yeah. No um, but I do want to. Oh, I'm hearing feedback here. Is that, are you hearing the same there? No. No, okay. So um, I just want to come back to what Melissa said for a second because she talked a lot about imposter syndrome and the fact that she felt, you know, when she was going over the state, she was a little bit intimidated and felt like, oh, this can't be me and came away feeling like this can be me. And uh, I didn't really chat about that at all when I was going through the agenda, but I think it's really really important point to make. Often we um, are coming pl from a place of a little bit of fear and worried that, it, it, you know, who am I to be doing this? Um, but I can tell you all of the women that I've worked with in this country um, have had um, so much strength and fortitude, even if they didn't know it. And that if that's stopping you, have a chat with me <laughs> and let's talk about that because we want you to feel like this is a program for you because it is. All right. Thanks, Julie. Um, so I guess, yeah, if any of you want you know, one-on-ones with Julie, she'd be happy. Her phone number's on our website or if you want to chat with both of us, we're, yeah, we'll both happily make some time. So um, thanks, Julie, for, for making yourself available. And um, yeah, enjoy your day in Sydney. <laughs> All right, see you all. All right.